In the last video, I showed you how I made seats from scrap wood. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made the bases. One version that goes all the way to the ground and one that swings out from a workbench with a swiveling seat on it. Let's jump in. I'll be starting off with the three-legged stool that goes all the way to the ground. These are made from three-quarter inch plywood and kind of have a spoke sort of design to support the legs. A smaller spoke at the very top that connects all three, but will also give me a flat surface to attach the base to the seat later on. Then another larger spoke down the legs to not only support the base some, but also give my feet a place to rest. I took the time to 3D model the stool first, so I knew exactly how big I needed to make everything. Then used a few woodpecker measuring and marking tools to draw it out on a good size cutoff, a three quarter inch ply. However, if you're interested in making your own, I do have a free download for both spokes available over on my website. There is a link for you down below. Once I had the spoke drawn out, I took it over to the bandsaw to cut out. If you want to make more than one stool, I recommend cutting the material for the number you want, then taping them all together with painter's tape. This way you can cut the pattern once, but make the total number of spokes that you need. Next I took the leftover cutoff to the table saw and cut a few legs. Since I want the legs kicked out like this instead of straight up and down, I used a speed square to mark off a 10 degree angle on both the top and the bottom. Then again, use the bandsaw to cut these angles out. If you do this, I recommend grabbing the miter gauge and setting it to 10 degrees so that you can get a straight cut rather than pushing it through by hand. Then last cutting detail for the legs is I added a small taper so the top of the leg would be chunkier than the bottom. After coming in at the bottom, I used a straight edge to connect it to the top and also cut it out using the bandsaw. Alrighty, now to clean up these parts, I moved my new dust collection card over to my workbench, hooked up the shop vac, flipped my belt sander on its back, then started smoothing out all of the edges on my parts. I originally thought I would paint or stain these bases a dark brown because honestly, I want the seats to be the focus. However, I really started to dig the look of these plywood parts and decided to leave them as raw looking as possible. But before moving into finish, I stuck a round over bit in my router table and ran each part through. And honestly, that's the majority of the project done. For assembly, I started off with the smaller spoke at the top and placed Type On Original in all of the cutouts, then shimmied the legs one by one into their spot. Cool. After getting all three in, I repeated with glue and placement of the larger spoke. And I placed this at a height that was comfortable for my feet to be propped up on. After getting it roughly where I intended it, I used a small level to make sure it was level across all three legs. Of course, checking to make sure that my workbench was level first before using it as a reference for these spokes. After letting this sit up overnight, I went ahead and took my belt sander to each top just to clean it up a bit and make sure that it was nice and flat. Then last thing before attaching the seats, I cleaned off each one and gave them four coats of spray lacquer. This hardly changes the tint or shade of the plywood so it stays that raw look I was going after, but it will give it some protection. With the seats being made from solid wood, I don't want to just screw the base directly into it. And I was planning on using those Z-clips or figure eight fasteners, but a buddy suggested I drill an oversized hole through the base for the screw to pass through, then add a washer to the head. And the trick is you don't want to over tighten the screw so that the washer can't move. By only tightening down enough for the seat to be secure, but allowing the washer to move freely, the seat can move if the wood wants to. I like this method as it meant I didn't have to wait on ordered hardware, so I tried it out. Yeah. Cool. I can flop. I can flop. What, well, baby? That's mm -hmm. one. And I must say, they feel pretty darn secure, and I was, am, really happy with the way that they came out. I honestly never would have thought I would end up liking the raw plywood base look as much as I do. Next, I repeated until all four were secure and sittable. 
With those knocked out, let's get to the more complicated but fun ones. For the four remaining seats, I switched gears completely and made some swing out swiveling shop seats that have a super size speed square design as a support. That's nine S's if you weren't counting. <laughs> Now I recently added a 4x8 Laguna CNC to my shop and I will be making a standalone video on that so stay tuned for lots of details. Since I wanted my speed square to be two-toned, I first painted a section of plywood silver then after it was dry, taped off the silver portion before setting the machine to carve out four squares. Each seat will be made up of two that will be glued together. Once the engraving pass was complete, I spray painted the markings black then set the machine to cut out the empty spaces and perimeter. While I'm cutting those out, let me talk to you about this video sponsor, which is NordVPN. If you're not familiar with VPNs, it stands for Virtual Private Network and is a service that encrypts your internet traffic and protects your online identity. Why is that important? Well, anytime you use the internet on a computer, a phone, a tablet, it doesn't matter. You're opening yourself up to somebody to potentially steal your information, such as your credit card numbers. Surely all of us have experienced fraudulent charges before. NordVPN is a way to go on the internet and protect yourself from these threats. It's like a deadbolt lock, but instead of securing your house, you're securing your personal information online so that you can rest easy doing your online shopping that the information you're typing in stays private. Since I travel a lot, I'm always using public Wi-Fi's to get work done on the go, which would leave me very exposed if I wasn't using NordVPN to protect my information. You can click the link down in the description and use my code at checkout to get 75% off a three year plan. To have this amazing protection on up to 60 of your devices comes out to under $36 a year. I personally think that is an amazing price to pay for the security and peace of mind anytime you're using the internet. All right, after getting those squares cut, I had the tedious task of peeling off the tape. I thought these would come off in a few big pieces and have this awesome reveal for y'all, but of course it didn't. <laughs> so I'll skip to the end and show you the results. It's pretty cool, huh? Like I said earlier, each seat is made up of two squares glued together. So next I applied glue to the inside face and set weights on it until dry. That's cool. Next up was making the flange that will rest on the top of the square assembly to give a flat surface for me to later mount the seat to. Started by cutting a wide board at the table saw, then using a square to mark off the center of the board so that I could cut a stop dado wide enough for the square assembly to snugly fit into. Since I didn't want this dado to go all the way from one side of the board to the other, I set up a straight bit in my router table to make this cut. I clamped a scrap piece to my router fence to act as a stop for the work piece. Then also set the fence's depth away from the blade so that the dado would start where I needed it. After a few passes, I got the width where I was needing it to slip the square snugly into place. So far so good, but let's go ahead and refine it a little bit. Instead of having just a big rectangle, the stop dado dies off in a curve that will later be used as a pivot point. Then I also marked off the sides so that I could remove the bulk wood here and slim down the profile in order to create a kind of pedestal on the end where the seat will later go. After marking off a shape that I liked, I took it to the bandsaw to cut out. While I was at the bandsaw, I also taped together some small pieces and made the same rounded shape that I did on the end of the stop dado portion to create some reinforcement pieces for the pivot points. I glued these parts together to be drying while I moved to cleaning up all of the parts I just made on the belt sander. Then it was time to start assembling. For this, I'm using Type Bond Original once again since the seat is inside. I applied glue to all of the dados, then started sticking pieces in their place. First placing the top flange with the seat mount, then the back portion, and then the doubled up pivots. I stuck that in clamps the best I could, then set it aside to start drying. While I was waiting on that, I started cutting and building a mating mount that will attach to my workbench leg and give me a way to connect this square assembly to. This is also made from plywood, but I am thinking about doing another rendition in the future where I keep the wooden square but make the rest from metal. After getting the first portion of the mount gluing up, I took the downtime to start painting the square assembly. I painted the entire frame black, then the rest of the speed square parts silver. And just a tip for you, when only working with the rattle can paint, but not wanting to take the time to tape off anything and everything that doesn't need to get painted, I grab a foam brush and spray some directly on the end and then just dab it on. 
And this has saved my neck a few times and actually works really well. I let the paint dry, then use this finished assembly to mark off where on the bench mount I needed to place the second pivot point. I did it this way because I wanted to make sure that it was the tightest fit as possible. Once I had the location of the second tab sorted, I added a few more reinforcement pieces, then set it in clamps to dry before throwing on a coat of paint so that it could match the other. All right, now it was time to drill holes for all of the hardware going in this thing. I'll be using a piece of all thread at the pivot point, so I started by drilling those holes. The important thing here is that these holes are in line with one another, so I use some simple wooden block as a drill guide. Also, I do recommend drilling these at a drill press, but mine was giving me issues and I didn't want to stop and mess with it, so I did these by hand. Next, I drill the holes through the back and these will be for the bolts to connect it to the workbench leg. After getting these drilled through the wooden mount, I clamped it to the workbench and drilled the same holes through the leg. I placed this on the inside of the leg so that the seat could fold up under the bench whenever I'm not using it and be completely out of the way. Now on to the hardware. Like I said before, I'm going with a piece of all thread to connect everything and create that pivot. And there are also some nuts, washers, and bolts thrown in there. Oh, and just a tip, if you do this, I would chuck this up in a drill and use its power to help get the rod all the way through these pieces. Next, I mounted it to my workbench and tested it out. You can probably imagine it was pretty nerve wracking sitting on it for the first time. Okay. <laughs> but things held together, so I moved forward with mounting a seat on it. I ordered some swivels so that the seat could rotate independently from the base itself. I first attached this to the mount with some screws and washers, then set the seat in place and attached it by going to the underside. And I think that's it. Oh, on the second one, you'll see that it's mounted on the end of the workbench instead of the long side like the other. That's because the apron under the workbench is so much lower on this side. My knees would be knocking into it. So this is fine. Now I'll have a seat I can use either on the end or on the long side. I absolutely love the way that this project turned out. I think it's fun and I think it's pretty darn cool. <laughs> Overall, the seats do feel good, but of course they haven't experienced much use yet. So we'll see just how well they hold up. If they end up failing, then no big deal. I'll explore making the mounting portion out of metal instead of wood. Of course, if I make modifications, I will bring a camera along to show y'all. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about my new shop stools. And I'll see you on my next project. I know, you're so adorable. I <laughs> okay. Is this a challenge? You don't think I can do this or something? Okay. Are we done for the day? I have a fresh batch of plywood mallets now listed on my website. If you'd like to pick one up for your shop, then head over to wilkerdews.com.